All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, hope you had a good break. All right, okay, let's uh, resume with our second session um, and we'll do a quick recap of what we've covered so far, right? Um, so from page, uh, page two, uh, the introduction of defining praise and worship, we started, uh, you know, with just understanding the context of, of what, what worship really is. And we are, we are designed to worship, we are made to worship, we have the capacity and the ability to worship anything or anyone, right? Because that's in our DNA and how we've uh, misunderstood uh, worship uh, in a way, in a sense that uh, we, we've thought that we are the recipients of worship. Okay? We are the center of the worship universe when it's not and it's, Jesus, who is at the center of it all, isn't it? And uh, we went through a few um, quotes uh, by by few people of their understanding of worship. And uh, we are now in page four, um, one of the last quotes uh, on worship. Okay, so I hope we are all there. And uh, quote number six by Bob Coughlin. Let's, uh, let me read that for us again. Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ, in our minds, affections, and wills in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, I just want us to, you know, break that court and really try and understand what Bob, Mr. Bob is actually trying to say. Okay. So here we go. Great. Okay. Christian worship, what does that mean? Christian worship is different from every kind of worship because it has been made possible through Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Christian worship is different from every other kind of worship because it has been made possible through Jesus Christ. So can someone please read to me, uh, read us uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, please. Keep your Bibles handy, please, and uh, all your phones. Okay. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And Thanks, you sir. have made... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Amen. Um, John, would do you mind reading us uh, again, please? Uh, so, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Amen. Thanks. Thanks, JP. Um, right, like, here's the thing I'd like to do. Um, can we uh, read the scripture in another language, uh, in a couple of different languages also? Like, um, any language, um, Kannada, Tamil, uh, Hindi, uh, one of the African languages is also cool. And then I want you to read it um, out loud for us. Uh, that'll be great. Whoever's ready, any, any language. I don't know if you're reading, uh, your mic is on mute. Uh, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, right. You language. Okay, uh, let's uh, let Aradhana go first and then uh, Abu uh, go next. Go ahead, Aradhana. <laughs> Okay, 
हर एक स्कूल और हर भाषा और लोग और जाति में से परमेश्वर के लिए लोगों को मोल लिया है और उन्हें हमारे परमेश्वर के लिए एक राज्य और राजक बनाया और वे पवित्र पर राज्य करते हैं Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abu Bakr, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Alice, uh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. So I'm reading it in Oriya. Samani gati nuta na gita gano kari kahi le. तुम्हें से ही पुस्तक ने और मुद्रा सब भांगाकू यज्ञ अट कारण तुम्हें हत हो पुणी आपणा रक्त द्वारा समस्त गोष्ठी भाषावादी वंश और जाति मध्य ईश्वर निम्ते लोक मान क्रय कर आंभ मान ईश्वर उद्देश्य राजकू और जाजक कर पृथ्वी उपर राजत्व करेंगे Yeah. Thank you, Alice. Uh, Pema, Daru. Yes, go ahead. You can read for us. Just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, there seems to be some disconnection with the line. Ebenezer, you want to go ahead and read for us, please? Yes, Pastor. Uh, I praise God from Telugu reading people. Revelation, Prakrant Grandamu, Aido Adi Ayamu, Tomidi Padvachnaal. A pedalo nivu, a Grandamu tisko ni, dhanu mudralu viputa ku yogi davu. Nivu vadimpa bedna vada vai, nirakta mitchi, prati vamsamulonu. आया भाषल माटड़ वारू प्रति प्रजू प्रति जन देवन को मनुष्य मा देव की वार राज्य याजकू चेसीवे गनक वार भूलोक मंदरपाट पादर so beautiful in a way that what we did is in from verse 9 it says every tribe and language and people every tribe every language and people right he purchased us with his blood jesus purchased us with his blood every tribe every language okay and people and every nation and he have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our god amen uh it is wonderful so that is uh, a gist in a way of christian worship this okay christian worship is so different from every kind of worship because it's been made possible through jesus christ and that's what we just read the second part um is christian worship is the response and what is that response and i'm going to request someone to be ready with acts chapter 17 verse 24 to 31 god has already done something outside of us and inside of us that enables us to worship we are not the initiators of worship god is okay uh, if you remember the quote that we uh, read by um Uh, David Peterson quote number 4 he says a uh, worship of the living god and true god is essential in engagement with him on the terms that he proposes means he is initiating it okay uh, can this uh, can someone read acts 17 uh, 24 to 31 please acts 17 verse 24 the god who made the world and everything in it is the lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else from one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as some of your own poets have said 
we are his of offspring therefore since we are god's offspring we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone an image made by man's design and skill in the past god overlooked such ignorance but how he commands all people everywhere to repent for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed he has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead thank you thank you first right thanks so this uh, this is a response uh, i mean this is what this is what happened and then uh, you know the next passage tells okay how we how we ought to respond so uh, this entails that god has already done something outside of us and inside of us that enables us to worship him and we just read through that passage um, and we are not the initiators of worship god is okay so christian worship is the response of god's redeemed people okay just as god delivered the nation of israel from egypt to worship him uh, so he has redeemed us as a holy nation to declare his praises first peter chapter 2 verse 9 we we read the same thing that's mentioned in revelation verse 5 chapter 5 verse 10 he's made us a kingdom of a royal priesthood a holy nation isn't it um so of god's redeemed people so that means we are the god's redeemed people so christian worship is the response of us the god's redeemed people what next to his self revelation we can't know god apart from him revealing himself to us and he has shown himself to us in creation in his word and through his son ultimately and we see that in romans chapter 1 verse 20 okay uh, quickly can let's just uh, because we are there in acts let's go to the next book romans chapter 1 verse 20 um, and see what it says romans chapter 1 verse 20 for since the creation of the world god's invisible qualities his external power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse All right thank you thank you sikina okay so to his self revelation so we see that he has revealed himself through his word through his creation uh, that exactly what uh, romans 120 says um to his self revelation of what that exalts okay uh, the essence of worship is exalting raising up lifting high submitting to magnifying making much of honoring reverencing celebrating the triune god um and one of the word that kind of stood out uh you know in the passage uh, that exalts is magnifying um what does magnifying mean what does it mean what does magnify mean so to enlarge something and seeing it right okay to make something that is small look big or big look bigger okay no sir small thing looking bigger right okay uh, and uh, have you has anyone used a magnifying glass in school days in trying to do that experiment of burning a paper folk pointing it towards the sun and stuff like that right so that's 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 the purpose of uh, magnification magnif- magnifying magnification is that you you make something look small look big or big look bigger etc you know uh, but the question is how do you magnify god who's already i mean he's eternal <laughs> he, he is eternal right and when when david says magnify the lord oh my soul and hannah cries out the same thing you know magnify magnify his name uh and what i believe happens is that he becomes big in us isn't it when we exalt him when we praise him when we lift him up when we honor him and when we magnify right he becomes big in our lives isn't it um he be- he shows himself bigger in our lives uh, um so that exalts okay so 
Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts, that worships, right? God's glory in Christ. God's glory in Christ. Um, Moses asked God to show him his glory and God passed before him and proclaimed uh, his nature. And we read that in Exodus 34. And God has enabled us to see his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, can we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, please? And, and, read, and read what Paul writes there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's God's glory in Christ. Um, and then the quote goes on to say, in our minds, that goes to say worship involves thinking, meditating, reflecting, processing, evaluating, understanding what God has revealed to us of himself. Um, and then affections. True worship involves the heart as well as the head. We worship what we love and value the most. And we see that in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 38. Uh, let's just quickly actually go to Matthew 22, um, 37, 38 and uh, see what it says. Yeah. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Amen. Thank you. Okay. All our affections. A true worship involves the heart as well as the head. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Isn't it? Amen. Uh, and then finally, wills. Our minds, affections, and wills. Okay. If we are truly worshiping God, we will truly be transformed. Our choices are reflect, will reflect our profession that, you know, that God is supreme in our lives. Everything that we do and say, some of you actually said uh, in the beginning of the class that worship is a lifestyle, right? Uh, and, and your will, your actions will show, uh, you know, uh, who your God really is. Um, and then in conclusion, he says, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are those who worship by the Spirit of God and depend on his leading and enabling. Okay. God is the Spirit being and we worship him in spirit and truth because the Father seeks true worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, So with all of these understanding, um, I know there's a lot of content in this, but one of my requests is, guys, when you go back, just go through this quote and go through this breakdown of that quote once again when you can. Okay, so uh, with everything that we've covered just now uh, in that light, I want to read that quote again. It says, Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people to his self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affection and wills. So something about Christian worship, uh, you know, we, we should be able to respond in a way because of his self-revelation that where we worship and magnify in, in our minds, affection and our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that kind of concludes just the brief definitions uh, of, for uh, worship. Um, and in conclusion, what we can take away from all of that, what we just finished is true worship is centered on, around Jesus. Okay. True worship is centered around Jesus. He is the goal of our worship. It is in Jesus, through Jesus, to Jesus, and for Jesus. He is the name above every name. Our, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and the end. The one our worshiping universe should revolve around. Amen. Um, do you, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, and does anybody would like to add from what we've covered so far? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, Divya, go ahead. Yeah, as we, uh, uh, Pastor, you were telling about uh, this definition of worship, what was coming to my mind was the woman with the alabaster jar. Um, yeah, so I love uh, her response uh, uh, to Jesus Christ as, uh, you know, he forgave her of all her sins and out of her gratitude towards him, she is worshiping and she just forgets about whoever is around. She forgets about, you know, what she is, you know, uh, the focus is only on Jesus and uh, yeah, he, uh, the others are focusing on the expense or of the perfume, but you know, uh, that that would be our response if you know our focus is on him and we turn our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, that is just I just want to add. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We we are going to uh, touch on the topic of of the woman with the alabaster jar in the chapters to come. It's uh, people who know me know it's one of my favorite passages in the Bible, and uh, we're definitely going to look at that. But thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, Okay, if there's uh, nothing else, uh, if there, anybody else Someone would like to share what, what you kind of took away from what we've covered so far? Okay. All right. Okay, sure, Ebenezer, go ahead. Yeah, Ebenezer, did you raise your hands? Uh, as pastor, as pastor. Sure, go ahead and uh, yeah, share. Uh, uh, just I want to add uh, from Mika, chapter 6, uh, verse 7 and 8. God is not uh, uh, expecting something from us that which we cannot give or uh, uh, something uh, it is a material thing, but he's asking from us uh, to listen his word, uh, to have compassion, to love, uh, Humbleness. Mm. Uh, this one only God is asking. Uh, he says, but I just want to add that. Thank you, Ebenezer. Thank you. Yeah, it says, uh, He has showed you, O man, what is good and what does God, the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's wonderful. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And uh, Lubega, I see you've raised your hand. Please go ahead. And I have learned two things among many. One is the contradicting words like disconnecting and connecting. You see, when you worship, you're like disconnecting yourself from the realm of the, the world and you are connecting to the spa, to the spa right. nature. Number two, right. I have learned that God, when we are worshiping, we are we are putting Jesus to be inside our box and at the same time outside our box. So thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Awesome. Amazing. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, let's. Uh, so we'll we'll continue on now to page number five, and we'll see a, a few definitions of praise. Okay. So we've covered. Uh, you know a little bit on on the definitions uh, that, uh, of of worship. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll learn a little bit about praise, and as we progress from chapter to chapter, we'll go deeper and deeper in, into the subject of praise and worship. Okay, so um, page page five. What is praise? Um, so before I continue reading from the text, I want to play for us one of the most amazing songs I've ever heard. Okay, are you all ready? It's, it's the best song I've ever heard. I've been listening to two and a half years of my life now. <laughs> Get ready. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Praise, what's that? It's a Yippee! Yahoo! Way to go, God! 
I just thought I'd play for us. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> uh, we all have to know I have a three-year-old at home and I've been playing this song for a long time. And, uh, and one of the things that's really struck me is praise, what's that? It's a yuppie yahoo way to go God. I mean, it's, it's, it's so simple, isn't it? Uh, we, we adults tend to complicate it, isn't it? Uh, you know, we've, but that's just so simple, just become childlike. And, and how would we explain praise to a, ch- a child? We, you know, we can't really go to the dictionary and say, okay, praise is to commend, to applaud. I'm sorry, what, Dada? What do you mean? You know, you know, praise is yippee, yahoo, way to go, God. You know, it's like, yay, God. Uh, that's it. Isn't that awesome? Right? Um, but now that we've joined, Bible college, and we are all adults. We just look at a little bit of the dictionary definitions as well. Okay, so um, hey, y'all enjoyed that song? <laughs> John, get ready. Have a playlist of those songs. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's go. Uh, what is praise? Um, to commend, to applaud, to express approval or admiration, that's what the dictionary says, to commend, to applaud, um, okay, to express approval or admiration. Praise is the verbal declaration of adoration and thanksgiving, okay? Uh, everybody with your mics mute say verbal. Praise is the verbal declaration of adoration and thanksgiving. That means you can't really keep quiet and you know, say I'm praising. Uh, it's a verbal declaration. It's a very powerful declaration. It's anthemic, okay? And thanks, adoration and thanksgiving for what God has done and for what he has promised to do. It, focus, it focuses on his character and his wondrous acts. Okay, so that's the basic definition of praise. And we see... Uh, Praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. Praise is the spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. A couple of definitions there. Sacrifice. Okay, uh, I've mentioned there's two points there, but before we get to that, what is your understanding of sacrifice? Sacrifice of praise. What, what do you make of it? Sir, it's in Hindi, it's uh, Balidan. Mm. Okay, uh, then sacrifice of praise. How is that connected? What do you understand of it? Anybody, feel free. Uh, giving up something for God. Okay, sure. Thank you, yeah. Joash. Uh... If I'm sharing the gospel and bringing people to the Lord, uh, that is best uh, sacrifice in Christian worship. Okay. What else? What more? There are about 27 of us. Go ahead. I, I believe a sacrifice is something that you give, but it costs you as an individual as you give it to someone. So it becomes a sacrifice if if it come if you give it at a price. If you give it at a Thank price, you. that's a very important line. Yeah, okay. We're gonna we're gonna remember that, okay? Praise it becomes a sacrifice if it's given at a price. Okay, let's remember that. Okay. What is uh, even when difficult times are difficult, thanking God. Yeah. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, guys. Praising God even when it feels hard. Right. Praising and worshiping God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here in your notes, it says, uh, sacrifice involves giving up something that we have a right to. Or sometimes sacrifice can also mean taking on something, taking on a responsibility or something that we don't necessarily have to. Okay, um, somebody raised their hands just a second ago. I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, okay, 
Yes, uh, Lubega, go ahead, please. I'm saying, to me, it actually means when we were studying economics some years ago, like uh, 20 years ago when I was in secondary, it is like a value of the foregone alternative. There would be something you'll be doing, but that value of that foregone alternative is what we call sacrifice. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jafina, I saw you raise your hand as well. Um, I believe sacrifice is something like giving the best that we can to our God from ourselves and yeah. giving whatever he asks for. Like, it could be anything, but without a doubt, God, say on God, I will give this to you. That's a biggest sacrifice of me. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Sikidna, go ahead. So for me, sacrifice means giving up something that you love the most or you wanted the most and exchanging it with your praise and worship or that thing you desired the most, you want it extremely, but still you are keeping it, you are separating it and you are going for the God's purpose. This is what I mean. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks, thanks everybody for sharing that. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, it's, everybody's on point, right? It's giving up something that we may have a right to, or taking on something that we don't have necessarily have to. Okay, that's one of the things. Uh, can we all also go to uh, Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fifteen, please? Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. By him, therefore, <laughs> let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Thank you. Right? So it says, through Jesus, therefore, yes. let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise the fruit of lips that openly professes his name. Uh, New King James Version says this, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So what do we make of that verse? How is sacrifice of praise the fruit of our lips? Come on, somebody. Like what, what we words. say should honor God. Right? Sacrifice is the fruit of our lips. So right. like in James also it says, right? Mm -hmm. What we speak is important. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Um, right. Uh, some time ago, Mulongo, uh, he said that uh, the sacrifice of praise is when we praise someone that costs us. But uh, very often than not, uh, our praise doesn't really cost us that much, isn't it? I mean, in our day-to-day -day life, we praise our dogs for going and fetching the stick. Uh, you know, we we, uh, we we praise our friends. It's like, hey, good job, Matsa. You know, it's like, oh, dude, that's an awesome. That was awesome what you did. We, you know, we do that or not? Yes or no? Okay, if I have to get more local about it, you have to say, Samma, Matsa. Samma, amazing, you know, too good, brilliant, right? Those are all praise um, in, in a way. But that, that that doesn't really cost me anything. The thing is, it makes me, in some way, it makes me feel better that me praising that person. It's very weirdly. But, you know, and I think in, in, in the context of our Christian worship, uh, Christian response, um, this is, again, my understanding of it, is, you know, when everything is going well, it's easy to praise God. You know, it's like, I praise you, Lord. You know, I, I got this month's salary. Everything is going well. It's amazing. You know, thank you. And I, you know, you're awesome and whatnot. Um, but then 
like you some of you have already expressed you know worshiping him in difficult times that's that's when you know on on our bad days not just bad days on our worst days like this, where the season just the season of darkness just doesn't seem to end um you know where the medical reports coming uh, you know in not in your favor you know um, your spouse is not treating you well you're not being treated well by your parents you just you just you're just going through a very very bad time in life in general um and it's in times like those i don't know about you i don't really feel that the first thing that doesn't that comes to my mind is not praise god i'm being very honest <laughs> but it is in those moments you know it's you're not feeling right you know it's you, you don't feel like worshiping or singing or praising but it's at those moments when you lift up those uh you know say father i don't know what uh, you know what's what's happening around me i don't understand it but i choose to praise you verbal act uh, anyways that is the fruit of our lips that's kind of costing you something isn't it? and then david says you know i will not give god something that doesn't cost me anything isn't it that's a beautiful way for a way to look at it isn't it so that's uh you know that's the spiritual sacrifice that we are talking about uh and that's what praise in a way is uh when hebrews 13:15 uh, is also asking us to do another definition or uh, understanding of praise a sacrifice is also death death to comfort self pity fleshly desires pride jealousy ego uh lust anger etc etc whatever it is you know death to self you know it's it's not only about me 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 everything has to be around me me you know we build a mini me temple for all of us um you know but, but dying to that uh, and that's when you know romans 12 comes into the picture you know offer your body as living sacrifices right uh, makes sense so so that is praise and uh and we'll conclude uh, this chapter with just understanding uh, this a little differences between praise and worship um god does not need our praise we need to praise him so one of the lines uh my one of my youth pastors used uh in early 2000s he said uh god doesn't need you but he wants you actually he said god wants you but he doesn't need you uh that's stuck with me uh for uh, till now and you know he wants us but he doesn't really need us uh to go about doing you know the stuff that he wants to do uh he, but he wants he enjoys partnering with us and similarly god doesn't need our praise uh you know when before there was anything i you know I, i'd like to think he created everything and he said it is good it's like he praised himself is like hey good job that's good you know uh he created the sun the moon and the stars uh the, the seas and everything he said it's good you know so god doesn't need our praise uh, he's self sufficient he's all sufficient uh, you know but we need to praise him and and one of the psalmists says praise looks good on us when we praise him it looks good on us so god commanded us to praise not because of what it does for him but because of the changes it brings us man um the second point there is praise can sometimes be distant the heart of man need not be near to god for praise to occur it is possible for even rocks to praise but worship is intimate relationship is a requirement for worship okay second point so praise can sometimes be distant what is it again you know we can like i said we praise our dogs we 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 praise this movie actor we praise this sportsman you know all of india is praising uh, the guy who won the gold medal that doesn't necessarily mean i know the guy right so you can praise someone from a distance so praise can sometimes be distant and you know 
just as the scripture says, if we don't praise, the rocks will cry out. No big deal. Creation that has no breath will cry out. I can teach a parrot to sing a song and praise, but it doesn't mean it has any connection. It understands everything about praise, right? Um, but worship is more intimate. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a relationship, right? It, you go deeper and deeper. You get to know the person. You spend time with the person. You, and you begin to understand the likes and the dislikes of that person. And you begin to fall in love. You begin to you know, uh, express your affection, your adoration, your love, and everything towards that person. And point three says, praise is always obvious, either seen or heard. But worship is not always evident to an observer. And... Sometimes it may be visible, but not always. And again, just going back to some of the definitions, uh, you know, we looked at earlier, uh, we as humans, we tend to gauge with what we see, isn't it? Uh, and for example, if a person is expression, full on lifting their hands and praising, waving left and right and whatnot, and versus a person who's very quietly sitting, uh, we come to, we, we, very fast come to a conclusion saying, okay, the person who is sitting and not doing anything is not worshiping, but the person who is lifting their hands up and doing everything is, uh, is, is the worshiper. But it uh, can be so tricky, isn't it? So uh, pray, that's the third point there is praise is always obvious, either seen or heard, but worship is not necessarily evident. It's not always evident to an observer. And actually it doesn't have to be. Uh, because I'm not the recipient. So first of all, I, should be, I shouldn't be looking at people around. Right? And then finally, praise is mostly horizontal in its purpose. We speak to one another. We, we invite, we encourage. Us, hey, Samus says, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Come, let us bow together in worship. Come. And so this is invitation, okay? It's like, hey, come, let us go. This is invitation for community. Let's just go in hundreds and thousands and praise him. Okay, whereas worship is so much again more vertical, it's just direct connection, it's so private, it's so secret. Um, so there's just a few differences between praise and worship for our understanding. Okay, um, I just want to pause here, and um, there's some notes that you can go through in you know at, at the end of it, but um. Guys, let's, let's think with me or imagine with me. We said Christian worship is about Jesus. Amen? I mean, it should do something to us every time, every time we say the name Jesus. Oh, that beautiful name of Jesus. And when we have his face before us, expressing our love and gratitude doesn't become hard. Worship doesn't become complicated as we have made it. Are you guys with me? Right. Every time you just say the name Jesus and you just behold the beauty of our King, that beautiful King who took our place on the cross, that beautiful King who had to be taught to walk, who needed help when he was born, who had to sleep, this God who never slumbers nor sleeps, he came down because he loved us. And this is the God that we are talking about when we say that he deserves our worship and that you do something. Isn't it? Amen, are you, are you, are you all with me so far? Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, we choose to praise and worship him, as, as it's mentioned in the notes, when we feel like it or not. 
we choose to praise him. We choose to worship him. Uh, just a few examples from the Bible is Abraham from in Genesis 22. We see, we know what happens there. And Job from Job chapter one, verse 20. And, and David in second Samuel 20, 20, when he loses his son, he wakes up, he cleanses himself, and then he goes and worships. Uh, our situation, our circumstances change for the good and for the bad. One day up and down, right? Today is good, tomorrow is bad. Our, change, our situations, our circumstances will change, but the worth of Jesus never changes. His worth never changes, isn't it? And which is why, you know, it is important that every time we worship that Jesus is the focus. We magnify him, we exalt him, we adore him, we honor him and him alone. No other name, no other rival throne, nothing else should matter. Amen? Amen. So uh, we come to a close now. We'll, uh, would someone like to uh, pray and close this session, please? Anybody? Can I pray in Hindi? Yes, please. Go ahead. Prabhu Ji, thank you for your support. We come to your house. 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 Prabhu Ji, we come to your house. 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 ताकि वो प्रभु हमें प्रभु जी और अच्छे से प्रभु जी तेरे इन ज्ञानों का परमेश्वर पिता अवगत करा सके प्रभु जी आज प्रभु जी हमने बहुत सारी बातों को आराधना के बारे में हमने सीखा है प्रभु हम धन्यवाद करते हैं आप जितने भाई हैं बहन हैं प्रभु जी वो सीख रहे हैं प्रभु जी मैं प्रार्थना करता हूँ सबको प्रभु आशीष कर और भी आत्मिकता रीति से परमेश्वर तेरी आराधना करने में सहायक कर प्रभु जी प्रभु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं हमारी अगली क्लास के लिए भी प्रभु जी आप हमारी सहायता करें प्रभु जी धन्यवाद करते हैं अच्छे क्लास के लिए और तेरे शिक्षाओं के लिए प्रभु जी सारा आदर महिमा आपको सौंपते हैं प्रार्थना अपने उद्धार करता जीवित यीशु मसीह के नाम से मांगते हैं आमीन थैंक यू थैंक यू सर